Microsoft has come out with its new web-based looking Outlook email, and mine got updated automatically when a Windows update happened recently. I did not ask for it, it just happened. And here it is. So, so far it doesn't look that much different, but you'll notice that a lot of the menus are gone. So the menus at the top are not the same as they used to be. On the left hand side, after we get to email, we have our calendar. Most of the time people like to go with either the work week or the day. So that doesn't look that much different. And then we have our people section. And I'll do some demos on creating new contacts and calendar items as well. We do have a section called groups that was not here before. I can choose to create or join a group. And this is a little bit like Teams in that you create a group where you have other people join together. And from here you can create uh, conversations, you shared files, things like that. So I'll just call this one the test group and it'll automatically append any email that you already have to this as far as domain goes. So there's my domain it automatically added. Apparently I already had a test uh, user beforehand. And I'll click create at test one is my new email address for this group. And here I can go ahead and add in various different members if I'd like. And there's my test group. And people will be able to email that test group and it'll go to everybody in the group itself. Then there's the to-do list, which is very familiar for, with people who use Outlook. But when you click on it, it opens up a web page instead. And it has a web version of your to-do list. So there's your tasks as well. Plan tasks, important tasks. So that is a new feature. And then here I have bookings. Bookings also brings up a new page. Here you can see that this is a simpler way to organize schedule and manage appointments. So it's an invitation based uh, type of booking, which is similar to setting up uh, a calendar, except for this way is more collaborative. So you can invite other people into it. And I'll do some videos on that as well. And a couple more left here. We have the OneDrive link, which once again opens up a web page and it'll show you your OneDrive files that you may have in there. And finally, you have more apps. So this will open up web-based versions of various different Office products like Word, Excel, things like that. And you can save your files to OneDrive if you'd like from here as well. And I'll go back to email. Uh, off to the upper right, this is the area that you used to manage using the file menu and then options. Instead, you're going to go to settings. So here are settings, and there are many settings in here. So this may look familiar, it's just in a different format. So you can see there's my email address. If I'd like, I can add an additional account simply by clicking on Add Account, and I can add another Exchange Online or Local Exchange account if I'd like. Here I can set up automatic replies for when I'm on vacation or ill. There's the Signatures page. I can set up signatures. I also have a Mobile Devices section as well. And this allows you to do things that usually only the administrator would be able to do, and that is do a remote wipe in case you lose your phone. And you can also do a recovery password as well. So this is a, a nice additional feature. General has some of the familiar types of settings here, such as language and time, appearance, things like that, notifications, etc. Under mail, You've got lots of options. There are some new ones. One of the more interesting ones here is the retention policies. This allows you to decide how long items in your mailbox are going to be saved. So you can choose never delete, one week, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, of course, most, most people are going to choose the never delete, which is the default if you don't set it up. And I'll click Save. There's also a Quip, Quick Steps section that our rules applied manually per, me per message. So what you can do is you can add a quick step and I'll just add, create a name for this one. 
I'll call this one copy to, and then I can choose an action and choose copy to, for example. And then I can say select the folder, and we'll say, well, let's move that off into archive. And then I can also choose a customization for the description. I'll just call it copy to archive. And then you can create a shortcut to that such as the control shift five will be automatically uh, used to the copy to an archive. And under calendar, you've got some options here. I'm going to choose to save those changes. We have the events and invitations, weather, which is something that's been around for a few years, uh, events from email. Here you can add events, as it says here, like airline flights and other reservations from your email to your calendar. So it will automatically add it to your calendar. Let's say you book a flight, it automatically adds that right to your calendar as soon as you get the email. People, you can display contacts by first name or last name. There's not a lot there that you can do, but uh, that is also an option for you. At the top, you can see that there are notifications in case you have any. And then you also have this little light bulb for tips. So you can look at unread items for tips or read items if you'd like on what's going on there. And then you can click on My Day, which is sort of a shortcut to your calendar that shows up off to the right to tells you that tells you what's happening. You could also click this little button here, which will then expand on that for you if you'd like. So that's just a general overview of the new web-based Outlook that came out in late 2023, and it's been updated again in early 2024, and I'm sure it will be constantly updated throughout the years. I'll be making some additional tutorials on this. If you have any suggestions on things you'd like to learn, I would be happy to take them and add them into this playlist.